Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this episode number 98 of Dads on Wrestling. I am, of course, the Renegade of Wrestling, J.J. Williams. And I am, according to the fake Honky Tonk Man, the Meech Mister. Meech Mister. Meech Mister. Okay. All right. Not that I'm going with that ever again, but, you know, I just figured I'd throw it out there since he threw it out Somebody said you should call yourself the Gingerbread Meech. The Gingerbread (laughs) Meech. Oh my and god. And then there's, there's the Meechinator. The Meechinator. Because yeah. I guess on some of the episodes you got like red eyes. Well, yeah, because when, when I look down after the bell, like the, the, the camera, the, the reflection from my phone like goes right into my, right in the eyeball part of my uh, my glasses, so it just totally like fucks with people's heads. It's hysterical. So. And yes, we can't cuss. The kids aren't here. Hey. Yeah, that's right. But, anyways, um, we're here on episode 98. Yes. To discuss a viewer submitted topic, and this one is a doozy. This is, is from Lord Von Huge in Dong on YouTube. I do believe he is claiming to have rather a large endowment in his pants and based on his name. Yeah. I'm guessing that. Discussion question for dads. Yes. Should all former slash future WWF slash E champions be granted an automatic bid into the WWE Hall of Fame. Okay. I am not including World Heavyweight Champions because there have been a few obvious holders that are not up to par. Hmm. My logic is if a jobber to the stars like Coco Beware can get in, why shouldn't guys who have been champion and headlined events get the nod? Honestly, they are going to start running out of credible inductees anyway, and this could broaden the available inductees. That was once again Lord Von Hugen Dome from YouTube wants to get our opinion on that. Well, Lord who is well endowed. I will I will uh, I will say what I said when we when we first had this addressed and we were yes. debating about it here in the house. To to steal a phrase from DX, Jeff has four words for you. Stan, the man, Stasiak. Now, based on his whole question about the fact that guys like Coco Beware are in, guys like Hacksaw Jim Duggan are in, which granted, Hacksaw's a former U.S. champion in WCW. A former television champion in WCW. It's guys like that that make the Hall of Fame go, what? So, on that logic, Stan the Man Stasiak, you know, guys like that, you know, deserve a, deserve a bit. Because if you're going to put a, quote, job to the stars, as you said, Lord. Um, I feel like I'm talking to God. Um, <laughs> Lord Vader, I bow to thee. That's right. Um, but I think that the Hall of Fame should definitely be reevaluated. And it's too late now. You can't take back a guy's ring after he's already got it. You can't take back Coco's and go, yeah, no. It, no. You can, however, sell them on eBay. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Superstar Billy Graham has proven that. But if you want to keep the Hall of Fame truly prestigious, you don't want to have guys like a Coco Beware or a Hacksaw Jim Duggan or, you know, it, it, I mentioned somebody else, whatever it was, last year the year before that should have been on. I can't remember now. That's how bad it is. But guys like Stan Stasiak. Oh, no, 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 no. He was champion for a grand total of nine days. And only was champion because they, for some reason, didn't want to give people the big Pedro Morales versus Bruno San Martino blow off. I'll never understand that to this day. That was money in the bank, not the briefcase. And Vince McMahon Sr. chose not to go with that. I don't know why. I'll never understand why. I wasn't there. I don't know. Um, you know, guys like Superstar Billy Grand, the longest reign heel champion of that. The longest reign of that championship, heel-wise. Yes, he deserves it. Guys like Bob Backlund, who are in, deserve it. Six years, yeah. con- contested six years as WWE champion. You know, Bruno, you, Bruno. Granted, he's got political heat, you know, and doesn't want the nod for whatever reason, but he definitely deserves yeah. it. Champion for a grand total of, like, I think almost eight or nine years. Yeah. That's ridiculous. The longest single reign of the WWE's championship history. I think the longest single reign period in a wrestling world championship history, if I remember right. You know, Hogan's in, you know. You got, you got a guy like the Warrior. P- 
people shit on the warrior. Including me. Including me. And you know what? At the end of the day, the warrior was the heir apparent to Hogan, or so we thought. And does a guy like the warrior deserve to be in the Hall of Fame? Based on simply the fact that he was the WWF champion. I don't think he does. Overall career statistics you look at, he didn't really do Hall of Fame stuff. He was Intercontinental Champion. He was WWF Champion. He was the first person to hold both the WWF and the Intercontinental Championship at the same time. Right. That and is history. Right, but it took two great guys in Hogan and Savage to carry him to even a decent match. True. And at the end of the day, you need to be better than that to deserve a Hall of Fame nod in my opinion. I, I'm not going to argue you argue you on that claim, but you say that he didn't... His stats don't add up to Hall of Fame worthy. Mm -hmm. First person to hold those belts simultaneously, I would consider Hall of Fame. That's history. Okay. True. Okay. Well, like I said, Stan Stasiak, The Warrior. You've got, you know... Um, God, who else has just been ridiculous that shouldn't have been champion? You know, you, you, you talk about not mentioning the World Heavyweight Champions. You know, you've got the great Kali. You've got, you know... Um, you throw Jack Swagger in there as being not up to par, and me and Jeff had this debate off camera. Yeah. It's not Jack Swagger's fault that the WWE didn't book her, book him properly yeah. as champion. Yeah, Swagger. Jack Swagger, in my opinion, I'm going to catch crap for this, is the second coming of Kurt Angle in the WWE. Yeah. As far as NCAA statistics, granted he's not an Olympic gold medalist, but he's got the amateur background, he's got the move set. He's got the flashy red, white, and blue wardrobe, you know. Yep. He, he is the second coming of Kurt Angle as far as WWE cookie-cutter mold goes. Yep. It's not his fault he got booked poorly during his championship run. I feel Jack Swagger is up to par. Mm -hmm. Jack Swagger is a former ECW champion, former U.S. champion, former World Heavyweight champion, Former Money in the Bank winner, successful Money in the Bank winner, yeah. unlike John Cena, you know, Jack Swagger has Hall of Fame credentials there. Yeah. And his career is still young. Yes. He still has the time to add a WWE championship to his list. Yes, An intercontinental does. championship to his they list. They get your crown, yeah. You know, he's got the time to pull that stuff off. Yeah, and you know, he mentioned the, the guy that asked the question, his, his lordship, um, nah, for nice, um, mentioned you know guys that aren't in our future WWE champions. You talk about a guy like The Miz, who is a Triple Crown champion, and you got to talk about a guy like John Cena, The Undertaker, who is you know he's going to be first ballot once he actually hangs oh, it yeah, up. Oh yeah, for you know, sure. You've got you know Edge, who wasn't too soon after his retirement, perhaps, but with all his credentials, he would have been in. Um, he, he definitely would have got in, you know, as long as he didn't pull a Benoit down the line. Yeah. But, you know, I definitely think he got in way too soon. It, yeah. it was a pity move. Yeah, same with Eddie. Yeah. Edge had to hang up his career, and he immediately got in. It was a pity move. Yeah. And I don't, I don't agree with that. That just cheapens the Hall of Fame. Yep. You know, end of the day, did Edge deserve it? Yes. Did Eddie deserve it? Yes. Should they have gotten it immediately? No. no. Not at all. Um, you know, talk about a guy like Christian who's never been the WWE champion, but, you know, could be down the line, has been the former World Heavyweight yeah. champion, former NWA champion, former ECW champion. You know, he, he, he's going to be there. You know, you've got, you know, guys and, like... And, and if you want to you wanna go based off of solely their WWE, WWF championship runs, you know, we're just looking at that. You know, me and Jeff, again, did this off camera. Andre the Giant wouldn't be in there. No. If you're solely going based off of his WWF championship run. Yeah, he was champion for about two minutes. Yeah. So somebody like Andre wouldn't be in there. Yeah. You know, somebody like Sheik. The Iron Sheik, yeah. He was champion for a month. Wouldn't be in there. Somebody like Vince McMahon, Vincent K. McMahon, champion for six days, vacated it, didn't even, you know, defend it. He just, well, I don't know. Well, he's not in there yet. I was trying to go with people that are actually in the Oh, hall. okay, sorry, my bad. I, know, I didn't. Sheiky Baby, who without him, Hulkamania would not have been born. Yep. Wouldn't be in the Hall of Fame. Sergeant okay. Slaughter. Yeah, Sar so Sergeant Slaughter was champion for two months. You know? Yeah. So, it, it, so it, there, there's a lot of viable Hall of Fame career people in the Hall of Fame 
that would be excluded if we went simply off of their championships. But, you know, with, with, with the Hall of Fame, you have to look at their entire career, both positive and negative. Yes. Because the war, again, I, I, I mentioned the warrior again. The warrior, you know, was he worthy of a Hall of Fame induction based on his run as WWF champion? Possibly, because he was a decent champion. He did hold the belt very well. He did defend it very well. But over his whole career, did he really do anything, be, you know, before... 88 and after 91? No. Not really. He beat Triple H in like 15 seconds at WrestleMania. To be fair, he beat Hunter Hearst Helmsley, who was still, you know, I, I understand that. I understand, that. I understand that. But the Warrior, that Warrior wouldn't have beat the Triple H that came along later. True. Hunter Hearst Helmsley was just a little snobbish little bitch and got his butt whooped. By you know being too arrogant, you know thinking the warrior was gonna come in, you know be this you know bloated fat, you know slug, and the warrior came in and just whooped his ass. Triple H from ninety eight ninety nine would have watched warrior run in the ring, do the whole you know thing, and boom, pedigree his ass like the fuck out of here. My ring, bitch, I'm the game, beat it. Touche. He a punked warrior's ass. Touche. And to be fair, he's verbally punked him since. Um, <laughs> if you don't believe us. Get the rise and fall. That's right. Or the self destruction of the Ultimate Warrior. That is, Triple H is all through. <laughs> well, so is Christian with the, with the Great Warrior impression. Um, on the outtakes. On the Hulk Hogan. That's right. And if you want to see a good Warrior Hogan debate, Dad's on whatever it's Renegade. 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 Renegade back, you know, a few months. Hulk Hogan. <laughs> I give Ray credit, man. You know, he shits on me, but I give him credit for that. That was good stuff. Anyway. Fat boy is mean Gene Okerlund. <laughs> With the same horrible mustache that Gene had back then. There you go. So, but up, up. Okay. But we're getting off track. Um, yes. I personally... I'm really torn on this because yeah. I do... There's a part of me that does feel that if you were able to claim the greatest prize in professional wrestling... That should definitely submit you as a Hall of Fame status. Mm -hmm. But then you got guys, like I said, like Stan Stasiak. You got guys like Iron Sheik who were never designed to be anything more than transitional. And that's the key. I, th I think that's the key in this whole thing is, were they designed to be a long-term champion, an experiment, or a transitional? Because you look at a guy like Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho's going to be in the Hall of Fame. There's no question about that. But even he in his own book felt like he was just a freaking lab rat during his three months as champion. Just trying to see, you know, what they could do with him. And at the end of the day, he beat Austin Rock, Rock, Austin, and then Job the Hunter. Did they really give him the chance as world champion? I don't think they did. His WCW championship run, short as it was, made him look stronger. When he was in the, and his world heavyweight title world runs heavyweight. after he turned his he, back and you know became freaking the best Bob Backlund, you know, with the, and Nick Bockwinkel with yes. his gelatinous parasitical oh, see, comments. Yeah, see, the world championship runs, the, the big gold, just the big gold. Were yeah, seriously that big gold belt is like his freaking, you know, yeah, his, his, his little well, his sweet came, Charlotte, if you will. He came from the company where that originated, yes, so I'm yes, sure, yes. you know. Yes, you know, you've got guys like that. You've got you know uh, Jeff else? Hardy. Jeff Hardy's WWF Championship run was a complete and utter experiment. They knew that he had already failed two drug tests, he had already been suspended twice, and they were hoping, praying that he would fuck up again so that they could go to the media and be like, you think that our wellness policy is a crock of shit? We just fired our WWE Champion. Rob. They put, they took the belt off of him and said, go home for a month. That's but the see, proof That right was there. the key. Yeah. They just told him to go home for a month. He still had a job at the end of the day. Well, Jeff Hardy would have been his third strike. He true. would have been fired. Yeah. Well, that's because Rob kept his nose clean except that, that one time. Sure he did. Well, got caught. How about that? He only got caught that one time. There you go. 
And at the end of the day, that was in the early days of Wallace Policy before they started really cracking down on shit. Exactly. Before. It was in between the Eddie and Ben Wise. Jeff and Hardy so. is... Yeah, Jeff, yeah. And, yeah. and at the end of the day, well, Jeff Hardy's accomplishments in the WWE... Let's not talk about, you know, TNA for a minute, because TNA, he was on top of the company. Was he a mess? Oh, yes. But he was still the lead guy in the company. But in WWE, his accomplishments there, Intercontinental, European, Hardcore, Tag Team, Light Heavyweight, WWE, World Championship. He's got the Hall of Fame credentials right there. But if you go off just his WWE Championship run from the end of December to the end of January, from Armageddon to the Royal Rumble, not a Hall of Famer. No. It was an experimental thing. He passed a little test and like, well, fuck you. Drop the belt anyway. You. Yeah, that's right. Loose the edge of the Rumble, thanks to your brother. And then they botched that for you, too. They botched it in 01, they botched it in 09. Yeah. So, like I said, there's a part of me that says that, yes, they should be guaranteed a spot as long as they weren't designed to be transitional. Exactly. And at the end of the day, there's transitional champions that are fucking in there, because we already said Sheik is in there. Yep. Slaughter is in there. Yep. Andre is in there. Yeah. Seriously, the whole Sheik, the whole... Ted DiBiase is in there. I thank you for that. Thank you You're welcome. Much, damn it, because that's the truth. But there are... Vince McMahon is going to be in his own goddamn Hall of Fame. That's right. He was definitely a transitional champion. Yes. Yeah, it was Kane never... Kane is going to be in the Hall of Fame. He was a... He was a... 24-hour, and I still swear to this day, it was only 24 hours because it was a fucking botch in the first place. Well, and, and, and see, there's this argument with that that I'll go on to for a second here. At the end of the day, The Undertaker came into the ring, and that led to the whole, you know, um, uh, what the hell's that word? C cahoots between Undertaker and Kane. So, it, it may have been, it may not have been a botch, because it did lead to them teaming up for however many months, but then Undertaker turned heel on Kane, and it led Paul Bear away from Kane. That's where I kind of see that it wasn't necessarily. But again, there's 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 argument for that too. Yeah. What do you guys think about that? Throw that in there too. Shoot, line up our video response and comments. Was the Kane under, was the Kane Stone Cold first blood match a botch? And while you're at it, throw it down here too. What do you guys think? Should a WWE champion, future or past or present? I mean, Punk obviously is going to be in. Maybe. Based on this reign alone, oh yes, because he's been champion for 200 some days. But should a guy who has won the big prize, the big championship in WWE, automatically, all right, you won the title, boom, Hall of Fame, Hall of Fame induction in your future? And what do you think? Give your definitive answer because you've kind of yeah, I've kind of back and forth here. Yeah. The the way I've been talking, like I said, I'm going to say yes as long as the reign was not designed to be a transitional reign. Yeah, and that's where I can, I, I agree with that. As long as it wasn't a Stan Stasiak. Sergeant Slaughter, Vince McMahon, you know, less than, you know, a certain amount of time, bullshit reign, yes. Like, you know, again, you know, you've got guys that are only champion one time that, you know, deserve it. Or, you know, two times, because, you know, Bob Backlund oh. was champion. You know, I mean, because you have Bob Backlund who was champion for six years, then he was champion for three days again. But Bob Backlund definitely deserves it. Look at the length of the reign, too, though. I mean, yeah. you know, The Miz... Right now, as it stands today, is only a one-time champion, but he held that belt yeah. for, what, like five months? And he was a good... Uh, 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 people are like, well, he was a weak champion. He was a heel champion, goddammit! Heels are supposed to be smarky, yeah. cowardly, yes. you know, scheming. Yes, as long as you get the as long as you get the one, two, three, by any means necessary. Win if you can, lose if you must, always cheat. That's right. So... The Miz, you know, a guy like that will probably be in because he's a triple crown champion now. And we had the argument about whether he's a Grand Slam because the European hardcore are, you know, absorbed into the Intercontinental now. So. Well, that's not really my basis for it came from. At the end of the day, the Miz has won every male championship that he can win with the exception of the World Heavyweight title. Right. And it's like he's won two mid-card titles, he's won the tag, and he's won one of the big ones. Should that grant him Grand Slam status now since there is no hardcore European light heavyweight cruiserweight title for him to get? So many things I say yes. So many things about this episode, you know, should they redefine the Grand Slam championship? Because Grand Slam has not been able to have been won in 10 years. Yeah. 
you know, can you can you still consider yourself a Grand Slam champion if you have not won the European or Hardcore Championship? Can you consider yourself a every champion? I mean, seriously, at the end of the day, Chris Jericho's going to be the fucking man forever. He's won every tier. You know, world, mid-card, cruiserweight, second tier, you know, all that shit. He's won all of it. Yeah, so, Christian you know, too. Christian too. That's right, Christian too. Very true. Because he was a light heavyweight champion. That's right. Tag champion, yes. European champion, intercontinental champion, world heavyweight champion, champion, ECW champion. The only thing he hasn't done is WWE and the U.S. And the U.S. can be rectified real quick by him. Oh, yes. Now he's dropped the intercontinental title. So. Lots of stuff to discuss on this comment board, yes. kids. So, so lay it out for us. So my Dark Lord, I guess our answer is a definitive yes. As long as it wasn't a transitional champion even though there's transitional champions already in the Hall of Fame. That's right. So. And there shouldn't be. <laughs> I hope we answered your question the way you were hoping it would be answered. If not, well, send a better question next time. If we did not answer correctly, we, we, we will live in fear. Lord, we the, apologize for that right there. It's you with the Avingi down there in Russia. Amen. That's right. We will, we, we will live in fear of the amazing bulge in your pants, Lord. That's right. He will. Yeah, I will. I won't. Oscar. I will, I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a running fear now. So, for this week's edition of Dads on Wrestling, I'm the Renegade of Wrestling, JJ Williams. I'm Jeff Meacham. The ginger meat, the gingerbread meach, and we will see you next time here on Dads on Wrestling.